Hi guys! All living creatures on the planet are programmed to have offspring, but taking care of them is implemented in different ways. Sometimes the father takes care of the baby, and some males even give birth. The cuckoo, in fact, resolved the problem in a rather radical way by delegating its parental duties to other birds. Today's episode, we will talk about the most unusual way to protect and care for your offspring. In the deserts of Arizona in the United States, flash floods that occur during rainy periods pose a particular threat to river animals. Few of them are lucky to survive in the stormy streams, but water bugs from the Bellostomatidae family adapted to the difficult conditions. When the river dries up, they attack other surviving insects, eat as much as they can, and begin to breed. All the delights of raising offspring literally fall on the father's back. It is the father's back where the female lays the eggs, and the males proceed to carry them for about a week. Without paternal protection, future offspring simply could not survive. There is not enough oxygen in stagnant water, and without it, the embryos quickly die. These males are amazing caregivers. With the eggs on their backs, they climb onto pebbles at the very surface of the water and begin to bend and unbend their hind legs, which is actually very difficult. These movements keep water circulating around the eggs, supplying them with vital oxygen. Caring for the offspring comes at a cost. Bellostoma bugs are predators, and it's rather hard for them to hunt with a load on their back. It is equally difficult to save themselves. While the male insect takes care of the eggs, it is virtually starving. By the end of the breeding season, there are a lot more females than males living in the water bodies. Hornbills treat family life and procreation with such responsibility that other species can only envy. You could probably also call it domestic tyranny and violence against the freedom of the strong and independent bird female. There are different ways to look at it. The fact remains that hornbills choose natural hollows for their nests. They don't make them themselves and they aren't woodpeckers after all. After mating, they invariably conceal the future mother of the family in a hollow. The hole is covered with clay so that nothing can get inside, and only the tip of the beak is sticking out. Somewhat radical, don't you think? This is undoubtedly an excellent defense against predators, and the male regularly delivers food to the hollow. However, the young mother has considerably more problems with hygiene in the nest than any typical housewife. Eggs are incubated in turn, so offspring of different ages often swarm in the nest. After breaking free from the nest, they spend up to five months with their parents until they are able to provide food for themselves. The giant isopod is part of this episode for a reason. The first thing that doesn't leave anyone indifferent is the insidious role of the male. It lures the female into the bachelor mating hole where the female is surprised to see a harem of 25 other pregnant ladies. If this wasn't shocking enough, there's another shocking fact. As soon as the offspring of the giant isopod are ready to be born, they begin to make their way out by eating their mother from the inside. This is the worst childbirth ever. Some creatures are ready for self-sacrifice and can even die for the sake of their children. The female octopus incubates over 50,000 eggs. The incubation period is about 40 days. During this time, the mother doesn't leave her future babies for a second. It protects them against predators and enriches the eggs with oxygen by ventilating the flow of water through the so-called siphon. Working as a bodyguard, the mother has no opportunity to hunt she is forced to starve until the babies hatch. Unfortunately, such a hunger strike often leads to the mother's death. Never settle for a joint lunch with a female koala, as the price is very high. Your life. The koala's menu is pretty monotonous and consists of eucalyptus leaves, which are very poisonous. The digestive system of this animal can withstand this dangerous food, 
thanks to the intestines, which are enveloped in special bacteria that can detoxify dangerous substances. Koala babies aren't born with such superpowers. Moreover, these babies lack ears, eyes, and fur. But a caring mother is always ready to help her babies, so she feeds them with her feces. This is definitely disgusting, but unfortunately, nature couldn't come up with a better option for these poor kids. After birth, koala babies spend about six months in their mother's pouch, where they receive their mother's precious milk. During this period, the cubs develop all the body parts that they will need in adulthood. While the babies sit in the pouch, the koala mother doesn't waste time. She sleeps. She sleeps for about 22 hours a day, which is almost 90% of her entire life. Is there a crisis in your country? Or is there an epidemic of dangerous disease raging in the world? This doesn't seem like the best time for childbirth. It would probably be better to postpone it until the crisis passes and a vaccine against the disease is invented. Unfortunately, human beings do not have the ability to suspend pregnancy like the females of the nine-banded armadillo. They can actually delay childbirth for up to two years. This ability was accidentally discovered by the American biochemist and battleship expert Eleanor Storrs. Observing animals in the laboratory, she once noticed that armadillos began to bear offspring a very long time after their contact with males. The scientists suggested that such a delay was a reaction to stress. By delaying embryo implementation, the armadillo female can wait for more favorable conditions and thus give the offspring a better chance at survival. If all is well, pregnancy lasts several weeks. It is also noteworthy that, unlike other animals, the female of the nine-banded armadillo lays only one egg, but from two to twelve cubs are born from it. They are usually all of the same sex. Babies can walk just a few hours after birth, and they stay with their mother for several months. Reproduction of the spotted poison dart frogs is interesting due to the fact that the male guards the eggs after the female lays them. It moistens the eggs with water and mixes them. When tadpoles hatch from the eggs, the male carries them on its back to the reservoir. It can't be just any reservoir. Finnish biologist Bibiana Royas conducted a series of experiments during which she established that the male chooses the reservoir where other tadpoles already live. It may seem strange, since it's a known fact that older siblings willingly devour the younger ones. However, that's only the first impression. After analyzing the results, a biologist suggested that the male chooses the lesser of two evils. After all, if there are tadpoles in the reservoir, its babies will be able to develop. How can a father know whether the conditions are right if none of its relatives live there? What if this reservoir will dry up and the offspring will die? The population has a bigger chance of survival in the right conditions. Royas has established through experiments that two to three tadpoles almost always grow out of four to five larvae, which is a very good result for amphibians. When we think of crocodiles, we imagine a perfect killing machine with a huge jaw that can break an antelope's neck with just one bite. Despite the fact that alligators are the most dangerous predators on the planet, they are also considered the best parents. Few people know this, but alligators are the only reptiles that take care of their offspring after they hatch. Everyone else just leaves their offspring to fend for themselves, but crocodiles don't. When small crocodiles begin to hatch through the shell, they make shrill sounds that are intended to warn their mother that they are ready to be born. After that, the crocodile mother carefully takes the eggs in its toothy mouth and carries the babies to the water. Plunging its jaw into the water, it gently shakes its head, prompting the crocodiles to swim out of the mouth. If they have trouble breaking the shell, the crocodile presses a little bit on the egg, helping it crack. Crocodile mothers and their offspring stay together for up to a year, which is an impressive period in the animal world. And that's all for today, everybody. Share your thoughts on this episode in the comments.
Who do you think is the most unusual parent on our list? Give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to share it with your friends. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.